Hey makers, I'm Andrew Bajeri with FSL 3D. This is the Pegasus Touch laser printer. It's a laser 3D printer. This one is a really unique printer. It uses a liquid resin that hardens with a laser. So what we're doing is we're tracing paths just like you're used to, you know, with an FDM printer, uh, except what we're using is this near UV laser diode. So you told me that you make your own resins as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It's technically called, you know, a photopolymer acrylate resin. Uh, you know, for those of you that are out there building models, the really important thing to think about is that it's got ABS-like properties. You can do all kinds of different, you know, colors. You can do clear. One of the really great things with this technology and these resins is, you know, the level of, of detail that you can achieve. So this is printed on our lowest resolution setting. This is actually 100 micron. I'm pretty sure this one, this one is the full length of our build volume. Uh, this is a nine inch Eiffel Tower print. Uh, right now our build volume is seven by seven by nine. And because we can move the laser so quickly, you know, we've optimized the chemistry of our resin. What we're able to do is print at 3,000 millimeters a second. So this print only took eight hours. Uh, this is the Retina Create software from FSL 3D. We have automatic support generation. And then one thing that, you know, we've seen a lot of people, you know, you want to be able to customize your supports. You can delete supports, you can move supports, and you can add supports with just a single mouse click. So it really enables you to achieve, you know, a lot of things that no other software out there can do right now. So the company actually started in our founder's garage. Our founder's Henry Liu. He has his uh, PhD from Stanford. And he started off just reselling lasers in his garage here in Las Vegas in 2009. And you know, he realized, okay, there's these laser cutters from China, they're really, really difficult to use. The software is you know, almost unusable. He started by creating a simple Mach 3 plugin, excuse me, and some you know, easy to use software. That developed into a print driver. And then what we realized, you know, we really want to have a laser that people can, that's really flexible. So the fifth gen laser over there, uh, that was one that we did entirely in-house. That's where we got you know, all of our experience with manufacturing. And that laser has a removable bottom. You can swap the tubes out. You can have all kinds of different power. It sits on your desk, you know, and it's, it's a very, very inexpensive laser. Our first Kickstarter rewards will be shipping in April. Uh, we've already taken care of a lot of the long lead time items. I think that you know, June, July is when we'll start going retail with them, but hopefully sooner if everything goes well. Is making going mainstream? Absolutely. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean. You know, you have these kinds of tools, 3D printers are becoming something that, you know, your average hobbyist can afford and that opens up a whole new vista for people, you know. Yeah. Right now we're kind of seeing the, the beginnings of this wave that's cresting. You have a lot of people coming from software and electronics and what they're seeing is you have these tools like Arduino and 123D, these free or low cost tools, lots of tutorials. Mechanical engineering is moving there now too. You have hacker spaces. Um, and one thing that we're really excited about is our lasers are already used in tons of middle schools. You know, we have probably hundreds of lasers in middle schools, high schools, some grade schools. And as lasers and 3D printers, these digital fabrication tools penetrate into education, you're gonna get the same effect that you saw with the PC. Oh, I was using this at school to type on. Now when I'm a little bit older or you know, I have some experience, all these people that are you know, way more creative than I am, you know, just making the tools, they're gonna to be using them to really create things because they'll have grown up with them and they'll be you know, not necessarily digital natives, but digital fabrication natives, in a sense. Fantastic, well, great talking to you. We're excited about this new printer and we can't wait to see it on the market. Thanks yeah, so Anna, much. thank you so much.